Welcome back to the Snowpoint Cast. Today we're going to take a look at a deck from Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends, Reggie Gigas. This is a deck that actually gains a ton of new tools into this format um, from the previous formats that it's existed in. So let's get right into it. This is a pretty, pretty cool list I got going on. So we're starting off with two Reggie Gigas. This one's the uh, drag off one. <clears throat> so I think playing any other Reggie Gigas is actually pretty wrong. I've seen some lists that play the recovery mechanism uh, Reggie Gigas, which, you know, I guess in niche situations is all right. But I think that it's just way too good to not have drag off. Drag off is such an important attack uh, versus Vile Guard. You get the Vile Plume in the active, and it's just a, it's a really good attack, period. Amazing against SP as well. So the first attack, drag off for uh, three colorless energy, does 30, and then before doing damage, you can switch the defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So being able to just have that damage control wherever you like is really nice. Also being able to um, hit them with, uh like the the play with drag off that's super important is you go drag off with an expert belt 50 on a vile plume 50 on that plume again crobat seeker crobat again and then they don't get the rescue energy if that's uh something that they have on their vile plume which they probably should so just kind of a neat play that you can do there and super important uh to be able to actually take out vile plume because there is some really good trainer cards that you do like to use later and then uh reggie's second attack is actually pretty good too for, so for four colorless energy gigaton hammer does 80 and then you can't use gigaton hammer during your next turn okay so <clears throat> reggie gigas level x super neat card so it's got 150 HP, colorless type, sacrifice, or four retreat, what a fat guy. Uh, sacrifice is the Poké Power, so once you turn before you attack, you may choose one of your Pokémon in play. Um, that Pokémon is now knocked out. You can search your discard pile for up to two uh, basic energy cards and attach them to Regigigas. So this is great for acceleration, obviously, um, because you play the, the cost on this attack is really heavy. So having some built-in acceleration is really nice, but also something really nice with Sacrifice is it lets you go down on prizes, which there are some cards later that uh, come into play based on how many prizes you and your opponent are at. Um, so really, really neat that Sacrifice gives you some control over that, and then also the acceleration is neat. Uh, and then Giga Blaster, so for Water, Fire, Metal, Cullis, it has 100 damage, Discard the top card from your opponent's deck, then choose one card from your opponent's hand without looking and discard it. So this is a great uh, disruption strategy. You get to discard the top card of the deck, take some resources out of their deck, and then also take some resources out of their hand, um, just being able to discard a card there. Especially with Judge or Giratina, um, Giga Blaster can be super deadly and can just straight up take someone out of the game for sure. So you're playing three Uxie as well. Uxie is a great draw card, uh, super staple. 70 HP, Psychic type, setup is the power. When you bench Uxie um, from your hand, you can draw cards so you have seven cards in your hand. So obviously just really, really good. Um, and then Psychic Restore you can use as well. So for one colorless, it does 20, and then you can put Uxie and all cards attached to the bottom of your deck in any order. With an Expert Belt, that hits uh, 80 on Psychic Weak Pokes, which does knock out some uh, basic Pokemon with Psychic Weakness. So good to, good to know that that's a Donk option that you have for sure. And then you also play one Ux X. Uh, so Uxy level X, 90 HP, Psychic type, the tr power is super, super good for consistency. So trade off. Once you're turn for your attack, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one of them, put them in your hand, take the other one, put it to the bottom of your deck. So just being able to see, you know, th if you're only top decking and, and you don't have a supporter, you're still seeing at least three cards a turn with the top deck and these two cards off the trade off. So really great at just letting you see more cards in your deck. And then Zen Blade is another attack that you can absolutely use in this deck. So for double colorless energy, it does 60 and then Uxy can't use Zen Blade during your next turn. You also play uh, Mesprit line because Psychic Bind is really, really solid. Being able to uh, ability lock your opponents is really pretty powerful. So 70 HP, Psychic type as well. Uh, psychic Bind, once during your turn when you uh, bench Mesprit from your hand, uh, you can use this power. Your opponent can't use any Poke powers on his or her... Uh, turn during their next turn so you lock them for a single turn but one of the reasons this card this card is so 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 good is because there's a supporter called seeker that got printed um that really it makes it lets you pick it up and it's just a really really amazing unless you repeat it over and over and over you can just retain the lock really really neat card in this deck um and we're not gonna talk about extra sensory because you can't use it use this psychic energy so you are playing one giratina as well this is another um it's a draw slash disruption card it's a little bit of both so 100 hp um let loose is the ability so same as let loose marshadow anyone that's familiar with that uh when you bench giratina from your hand both you can have both you and your opponent uh shuffle your hand in and draw four so you know if this is the last card in your hand you just get to draw four off it which is really really not bad and then also like i was saying before with that um gigaton or giga blaster being able to disrupt your opponent you know you put them down to four and then you take one out of their hand and all of a sudden they're put down to three and that's pretty deadly for sure can absolutely take a game and then uh, you also play one Smeargle, so this is another kind of uh, Pokemon consistency card. So Smeargle's got 70 HP, Portrait's the power that you care about on this guy, so once you're in your turn, uh, Smeargle is in your active position, uh, you can 
choose to activate this power, uh, then you look at your opponent's hand, take a supporter card you find there, and use it as the effect of this power. So just being able to see your opponent's hand, kind of see what they have, and then also be able to get uh, some double supporter turns in. If they play, if they have a supporter, you can play it, and then if you have a supporter as well, you can play two in a turn, which is kind of crazy. Tail wraps also broken, so two double or double colorless. That's 20 times. Flip two coins as a deck does 20 damage num times the number of heads. Literally insane. You could donk a Garchomp with this. Such a broken attack. Okay, as you also play one uh, as elf. This is just for Pokemon consistency. So 70 HP. Time walks the power. So uh, when you bench as elf from your hand, you can look at your prize cards. Um, take a Pokemon you find there and then reveal it to your opponent and take a card from your hand and replace the card um, that you took from your prize card. So great for being able to take single cards out. There are these one ofs and a couple other ones that we're going to go over. So really nice to be able to have those uh, access. Also, your main attacker is only a 2-2 line. So if you prize one of the basics, that's kind of a big deal. So just being able to have access to that is really nice. Then you're also playing one um, Regice. So Regice is a great Pokemon just to... It, it's for getting cards in the discard, but also is good for forcing your opponent to switch if uh, that's something you need to do. So it's got 90 HP. Reggie moves the power that you're going to be using this guy for. So once you're in your turn for your attack, um, you can use this power. Discard two cards from your hand. Then um, choose... Your, one of your opponent's active Pokemon that isn't an evolved Pokemon, then your opponent switches that Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. So they get to choose the switch, but forcing them to say, hey, I don't want to attack whatever you have in your active. Let's say they have a Dialga level X or something and just say, hey, I'm not going to deal with that. You can switch that with your bench and I'll hit something on your bench instead. So just being able to force that move is, can be really nice. And then Ice Reflect, because you can use it. So Water Water Colossus does 50. If Red Ice is damaged or was damaged by an attack during your opponent's last turn, this... The, oh, the defending Pokemon is now paralyzed, so it's an auto paralyze attack, which is kind of neat, but you also have to manually charge it up, which will take too long. Um, okay, so you're also playing one Crobat. So Crobat Flashbite is an amazing power. 80 HP, free retreat, Flashbite. When you bench Crobat, you can uh, choose somewhere on your opponent's board and drop a damage counter on it, so it does one damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, essentially. Um, and then you can't use Toxic Fangs, so we're not going to talk about it. We do play an Unknown Quick as well. So Unknown Q has got 30 HP free retreat, which is kind of really nice. And then Quick is the power. So essentially, if Q is on the bench, let's say this... Well, it doesn't matter for this guy. Well, it, this is an important situation. So you have a Smeargle active because this is a Pokemon that you need to have active to use the power. So let's say you had a Smeargle active, you just use the power. Now you want to retreat to the bench. You, if you can find a Q or you have one in your hand, you can go Q. I'll bench it. Activate Quick. Po Unknown Q now isn't a Pokemon. It's a Pokemon tool card. I'm going to attach it to Smeargle. And the Pokemon that's attached to has one colorless less retreat cost. So being able to just retreat for free because he's a single colorless is uh, really, really clutch. And it's a great um, out to that card. Just being able to have some f retreat options. You can retreat Mesprit or Uxi as well uh, for one or the Azelf as well. These guys are a bit too thick for that because they're three retreat. But a lot of other stuff you can get uh, moving around. Okay, so let's get into some of the trainer cards. So starting off with three Expert Belt. Um, so this is a tool that you play. <clears throat> Expert Belt uh, gives your Pokemon 20 more HP and lets them do 20 more damage. But also when your Pokemon is knocked out, your opponent takes an additional prize card. So great on a Regigigas, right? 150 HP is already really tanky. Put another 20 HP on there and it's even tankier. You really don't want these guys to die ever. You want to be sacrificing this and then just having this energy and this uh, stay healthy. Oh, Something I didn't even mention about Sacrifice is you heal eight damage counters when you use it. So being able to heal, Sacrifice heal is super, super important. Um, and yeah, that that is great. Being able to heal with Expert Belt, it just gives you so much more livability um, with even the 20 more HP. It's, it's actually a really, really big deal. Uh, okay, so being able to do more damage is great. And like I was saying before, the drag off play with the Expert Belt. That's kind of why I play three. I think three is important because you need to have one on a Regigigas early before a Vileplume locks you. If you aren't able to hit an Expert Belt before Vileplume locks you, that makes your numbers really bad because then you're going 30 on Vileplume, 30 on Vileplume again is 60, one more time is 90. And now you can't hit the Crobat double knockout turn. It's where you go like Crobat, you know, bring it back to the hand with a seeker ko you have to drag off it and then rescue energy is activated when it gets knocked out so it's a lot worse and having that early extra belt is a really big deal so it's kind of why i play three in this meta i think three is probably the right count there you just want to see it early all the time too it's really good on uh, uxy and rigid gigas there's something to junk arm uh, i love this card in this deck and it's so good one of the biggest buffs um that this deck got the giratina is actually really nice too but the or the usability of it rather because seeker is the thing but junk arm's amazing in this deck so junk arm discard two cards from your hand search your discard power for your trainer card show it to your opponent and put it in your hand so being able to recover your trainer cards is great you don't get supporters from that unfortunately um but you can get any of your trainers which is sick also something really nice with junk arms it lets you discard cards so let's say you have a couple energy in your hand that you want to ditch so that you can sacrifice and accelerate them um junk arm is another out to that as well as uh red ice and you can play another couple cards uh that we're, we're gonna get to in just a sec but the junk arm is great and it means 
means your overall consistency is so good because you just have access to cards in your discard in the middle of the game. Junk arm, broken, broken card. I would honestly even consider going up to three on this. The reason that I'm not is because I'm kind of scared of Valgar, and I think Valgar is a really good uh, deck in this format. And that matchup's also kind of hard with this deck, so I kind of stuck with two. But I think that I absolutely could see an argument for three, especially in like an SP heavy meta. Um, okay, so moving on, we're going to play one Energy Exchanger. This is another uh, Majestic Dawn to Call Legends uh, only buff. So this card's from Call Legends. Energy Exchanger, choose an energy card from your hand, show it to your opponent, put it on top of your deck, and then choose your or search your deck for an energy card, and then show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. So this is great for mostly finding DCE, um, finding a double colorless energy, or whatever other energy you need as well, because there are, it's a triple cost, so you need the Water, the Fighting, and the Metal. So being able to switch it around can be important if you want to get the Reggie X's attack off, but also being able to find the DCE is really, really important to be able to drag off early. And with this card, um, it's a searchable card with Twins, which is a supporter card that we're going to go over in just a second. But being searchable makes it amazing, because then you can have an energy in your hand, search it, put the energy back, and then all of a sudden you're uh, hitting some combos, doing some stuff. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we play one warp point as well. Switching is really big. You play a lot of really heavy attack or heavy retreat uh, Pokemon. So Regigigas is four retreat. Regice is three. Giratina is three. And there's stuff that drags off in the format, like Blaziken is the thing that exists that you sometimes have to deal with. So being able to switch around is really nice. And then you also play one switch for the exact same reason, obviously being able to switch around. Um, you know, you only play two of these, but with two junk arm, essentially it's four if you need four. So that's really nice as well. You also play a warp energy. So I think that's like plenty of switch, honestly, lots of switch in the deck. Um, but it is really important to have that mobility to be able to move around. You're also playing one VS Seeker. So VS Seeker, take a card from your discard pile uh, or a supporter card from your discard pile show it to your opponent put it in your hand so being able to take a supporter card is really really great depending on where you're at in the game also you can use this twice with junk arms so potentially you have three versus seekers available to you which in the late game is actually really insane if you can get a versus seeker in the discard and you have junk arms remaining your late game options for supporters get really really good okay so we're also playing one pokemon rescue um you know this is just a decent card i think there's uh some lists of the old reggie gigas list in like 2010 that play a lot more of this card but i think with junk arm you can like totally get by with just one i don't think you need more than than one it is kind of important because you are sacrificing stuff right so it's gonna be you, you are gonna have stuff in your discard that you uh want to take back out but i think with seeker pokemon rescue is a lot less of an issue for sure um okay so you're playing one pokemon communication as well so just great pokemon search choose a pokemon from your hand uh put it on top of your deck and then search your deck for a pokemon put it back in your hand um so just being able to exchange pokemon you play a lot of different pokemon so depending on w at what point in the game you're in being able to change one out is uh definitely really nice you also play a premier ball so premier ball search your deck for a level x pokemon or search your discount power for a level x pokemon show it to your opponent and put it in your hand um so being able to search your reggies is good as well as your oxy that's the only thing that those grab uh but being able to recover especially like get them out of the discard gigas x is really really nice for sure you're also playing one luxury ball so luxury ball search your deck for any pokemon excluding level x show it to your opponent and then put it in your hand so you get any one of these guys except for these three really clutch for finding a mesprit or uxy especially um to be able to lock up the game or draw some cards is very very nice Okay, so getting into the supporter cards, we're going to be playing four Pokemon Collector because this is a busted card, really, really solid card in this format. And honestly, the only card that you want to see turn one. If you get other supporters, that's cool, but you want to see a Collector turn one all the time, so that's why you play four. So Collector, search your deck for three basic Pokemon, uh, and then show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. So great for finding any combination of what you need. You know, if you need a Reggie, Gigas, an Uxie, and a Mesprit, that's a deadly turn. You're locking them, starting to set up your main attacker, and then also potentially drawing more cards. So... Just really good, and depending on, you know, you have so many options because you play so many basic Pokemon. Pokemon Collector also finds you a Letloose Giratina, so, you know, if you're if you are at the point where you're like, okay, Collector's my last card in the hand, I could Uxie draw up to seven, or I could let loose and draw four, and then also, like, hurt my opponent's turn one before they even get to draw. Or, I guess you can't because you can't play Collector on turn one. But you can put make them put cards back before they have the opportunity to use a supporter which is really good because you can potentially just have them brick off of that kind of depends what your board is too um but i mean if you have a smeargle start i think going smeargle into let loose is like super fine because either you're both okay or you're both not <laughs> and that's pretty fine too okay so moving on we also play three twins so twins i think is one of the cards that uh makes this deck really really good so it, it's pretty good in 2010 but i think twins actually like makes it maybe mid a maybe top of a i think it's actually really really solid in this like a tier um because twins lets you do this with sacrifice so sacrifice let's say you're building a board you can go sacrifice if you have a twins in your hand you uh, let's say i go sacrifice right and i'm almost at a reggie gigas but i'm not there yet so i have i have an energy on there i go sacrifice i get two energy or whatever 
and then I'm I'm still one energy away and I don't have all the stuff I need. I can just go twins after because I just sacrificed and I'm down on prizes. I'll go twins, I'll find, let's say, you know, an expert belt and an energy, and then all of a sudden I'm attacking and doing the max amount of damage that I want to do. Or, you know, whatever whatever you need, right? An energy and a mesprit if you want to power lock next turn. Um, but just having that option to get any two cards in your deck is so good, especially because you have control over that aspect of the game of whether you have more or less prizes than your opponent because of sacrifice, you have so much control over that. And then with twins, just the synergy is really, really good. I think these two cards synergize extremely well with one another. And it's one of the reasons that I play three because it's just such a good card in this deck. So just playing three Seeker. Um, another really solid buff that this deck gets from Majestic Dawn to Call Legend Seeker is insane for picking up Mesprit. You can just go Mesprit, Psychic Bind, Mesprit, Psychic Bind, Mesprit. You just do whatever. Another really crazy thing that Seeker can do is actually heal Rigigigas. If you're at the point where Rigigigas is like going down next turn and you don't really want to sacrifice, you can do something where you go Warp Energy, move it to the bench. And if you have another one, like obviously you want to be loading a second Rigigigas as soon as your first one is loaded up. But if you have a second one loaded up, you can just go, you know, Warp energy, seeker, put it all back in my hand. And then if I want to like put the expert belt back on that one or sacrifice something else and then put the energy back on, I can also do that. Um, so yeah, seeker to heal is really great or also reuse Uxie or Mesprit or Crobat or let, let loose Giratina or even As Elf if you wanted to do that. It's really just a super, super solid card that has a lot of uses in the deck. I was playing three Sages Training. So this is another Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends only card. Um, that's really, really good in the deck as well. So <clears throat> look at the top five cards of your deck uh choose any two cards that you found there put them in your hand and then discard the rest of the cards so seems really not great but actually it is awesome because not only are you you know seeing the top five cards of your deck pick two is pretty good but also the discard cards is really good that's the really big beneficial part because you want to take the non-basic energies and then discard those so that you can accelerate them with sacrifice so super great card at uh, getting pokemon or getting energy cards in the discard I'm playing two baby search uh so Bebe's, I think, is a super important card because of Vileplume, like I was saying before. Um, you know, you play a ton of non uh, supporter based Pokemon search, but if you're a trainer locked, that doesn't really do you any good. So I think two Bebe search is really, really nice as well. It just helps you find your um, level X's. You know, collector can find everything else, but Bebe search to find your level X's is pretty important. Bebe search, just uh, take a card from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, search your deck for a Pokemon, and put it back in your hand. So just great for uh, finding any Pokemon that you need. And then you're also playing one Judge. So Judge is a uh, hand disruption card, really solid. So both players shuffle their hand in and draw four. So being able to have that option, just go, okay, well, I'm going to use Giga Blaster next, this turn, and I don't have access to a Let Loose, and I don't even really want to put my hand back. Oh, well, actually, you have to with Judge. But let's say you have access to a Judge. You can just go, okay, Judge, and then Giga Blaster, and then it's the same situation as Let Loose where you get them down to three-card hand and you discard the top card of the deck. So it's just a really great disruption card. You only play one of it um, because the Giratina, especially with Seeker, is a lot more consistent and reliable. Um, but you still play one just because it is a super good card. And just being able to disrupt your opponent's hand is really solid as well. Okay, so you're also playing four double colorless energy. Obviously super good um, for drag off um, and also lets you attack with the Uxie X. But just a great card. You, that's your turn one attach that you really want so that you can attack turn two. You can never attack turn one on this deck, but you can attack turn two. Uh, if you hit the double colors energy and another energy to attach. So that's why I think you play Forge because it's really, really solid in the deck. Also playing three metal energy just to fulfill that um, metal cost on Rage Gigas level X just makes sense. You're also playing three fighting energy for the same reason, as well as three water energy, just because, you know, you need to be able to fulfill um, the attack cost. The reason that I think you can, you're can, you super fine with three, uh, one of the things that this deck loses actually into this format is Roseanne's research. Being able to search those individual energies was really nice. Um, but I think with Energy Exchanger and Junk Arm and Twins that you're like pretty fine, to be honest. But I, I still think, you know, three through three, you could play a little bit more if you wanted to, but I think three through three and a Warp Energy is probably actually fine uh, in this list. So you do play one Warp Energy. I put the warp in there just because it's something that you can energy exchange her for, which is kind of nice. And also having the option to just go, oh, I'm stuck. I can't do anything. I'll go twins and then I'll find this and have a guaranteed switch option, even if I'm trainer locked, right? Because then you're, that's not a worry for you to have. So be, being able to get out of um, like the active position in multiple different ways, this, this, this uh, is all super, super nice and really important because you do have some really fat retreaters um, that you don't really want to have in the active sometimes. Okay, well, this has been Regigigas for... Um, Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends. If you have any questions about the deck, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next time.